Okay, so I want to. This is a 20-minute talk. I'll go fast. Uh, most likely, no question, but I don't want to be rude, so I said, uh, "How can you follow up?" Right? I'm not taking any question, so you can go to community zone. Feel free to follow up with my contacts. That they are there, line 11, 12, 13, 14. You can use any of those to contact me. And I'm a little bit old still. I still have cards. If you want to take this and follow up with me later on, uh, that is also a possibility. I want to thank sponsors, attendees, like in you know, a Friday afternoon. I know many of the people are heading home, and you have 10 other choices. I'm glad you are here. And also some people join online, so thanks to them. I'm not going to read the abstract, but I was telling, um, just to be on the record, this talk is the first time I'm giving this. Last year I interviewed 80 people in the US and in Australia because I had two open positions. Some of them I asked these basic questions, as you see here, and between 70 and 75% people got this wrong. And it was, uh, I wouldn't say I was shocked, but it was a revealing fact to me. I didn't uh, expect that. I thought everybody knows this thing, so then I thought, you know, I'm just gonna talk about it uh, going forward in, in, in few conferences. Okay. Uh, this is a long script. I, didn't, I should have divided this into five, but because of the time constant, I just didn't want to move into tabs. So I put all this one. This will be in my GitHub. You can download. I ran some of the code before, some lines, to, be, you know, to save some time. So I'm going to set this up now, and then we'll start from myth one to myth five. Uh, and I put enough comments that once you download, you should be able to follow this along. So I'm not going to read my comments. So up to here is a setup. It's just an empty database and store procedure that I'm going to use, just do basic inserts. So the first one, does full and differential backup breaks the lock chain? I'm not going to ask you the question because I'm going to show you. I know the answer. But there will be quiz in between, so please pay some attention there. Uh, there may be prize, maybe no prize. I don't know. We'll see. So the first one, uh, you know, go five. I don't know. Some of you might not be used to this syntax, you know, I can write a while loop, but if you want to do it quick and dirty, it will execute that statement for five times. So I'm just doing, you know, inserting this rows five times, and I'm taking a full backup. Simple. Done? I'm inserting another five rows. I'm taking a transaction log backup. So just follow the sequence, because it will help you in the quiz. Inserting another five rows, so we'll be done. How many after this? 15, five, five, five. So keep track, there'll be quiz. And I took a full backup now, after the number 15. Now I'm doing another one, and I'm taking another transaction log backup. How many rows do we have? Sorry? 20. 20, good, you got it. So you're paying some attention, thank you. I appreciate that. I know it's after lunch, Friday. So 20 rows. Now, I'm going to restore it. I'm going to restore the first full backup that I took after first row, first five inserts, five row insert. Right? Just to prove my point that I didn't cheat, I have five rows, right? Expected. Simple. I'm restoring the first transaction log backup that I took. And I'm using something, um, there's a standby. I'm not going to go there, so I can restore further, but I can also read at the same time. There's a difference between no recovery and with a standby. How many rows do we have? No, I already said that. I, sorry, I shouldn't have. So we have 10 rows now. So then I inserted five records. I took a full backup, and then I inserted another five, I took a transaction log backup. Now, to get to 20, do I need that full backup, or I can just restore the last transaction log backup? Yes, but some people think that that full backup that I took, it broke the transaction log chain, and you cannot do that. So there's a lot of people think that, so that's my point here. So I'm going to restore the last transaction log, and we get all the 20. So the second full backup did not break the lock chain, right? That's the point here. A lot of people think that. 
differential backup is going to do the same. It is not going to break your log chain. So if I do the same demo, instead of the second full log backup, if I take a differential backup, I'll be able to skip that and restore the second transition log backup. I'll still get all 20 rows back in my restore. So I'm going to skip that. I put the code here. If you want to test it, you can do that. It's the same sequence, except the second full is got replaced with a differential backup. Make sense? Any question? Quick question, I can take one. No. OK, I'll move on. Second one, are differential backups incremental? So many of us take full backups on a weekend, and maybe weekdays we take differential. So if I'm taking Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday I get a request to restore, do I need to restore all the differentials? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. A lot of people think that, yes, I have to. So that's the point of this. I'm going to just give a quick demo. I'm glad that all of you know, many of you know, but that was not my experience when I was interviewing last year. So I'm going to truncate that same table that we did the insert before. Five records, full backup. And I'm going to do five, 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 and every time I'm going to take a differential backup. So I'm taking three differential backups after every five record inserting. So how many records do we have? Same as before, 20. I'm restoring the first full backup that I took after I inserted the five records. Five records. I'm going to jump to the last differential backup. I took three, right? I'm only going to restore the last one, not the, second and thir uh, not the first and second one. Skip to the third one. We get all 20 tables. Uh, sorry, 20 records. So the point here is the differential backups, you do not need the, you know, you can just do the last one and then whatever transition log you need based on the request that you get to restore. You know, on a side note, there are scripts that sometimes you can be intelligent. If there's a lot of change in your database, does it make sense to take a differential or a full, right? You know, there are websites, people blogged about it. You can go and see how many extents changed since your last full backup, and you can do some intelligence not keeping diff that's similar size to your full backup if there's a lot, lot of changes were done, right? That will save you, or, you know, space-wise, or just if you have to restore, um, uh, you know, it's a lot easier. A lot of people get confused what they can do with system databases, right? Can I restore it? Can I take backup? What can I do? So a master database, by default, when you install SQL Server, it comes as a simple recovery. You can switch it to full or bulk load. I don't know there is a reason, but I'm just letting you know that officially you can do it. Um, so just checking you know, that ours is a set that I didn't change it. So it's in a master database, simple recovery. Can I take a full backup? Yes, I can. Can I take a differential backup? Because normally, if your database is in simple recovery, can you take a differential backup? You can. In master, can we? It's in simple recovery. We cannot. And if you read the error message, it's pretty clear. You can only perform a full backup of the master database. You cannot take a differential backup, even though it's in simple recovery. Oh. And I can change it to full recovery. <laughs> Microsoft let you do that. Now, can I take a full still? Yes, I can. Because I put it into full, is there any change on the differential? No, you still get the same error message. And of course, I'm not going to try the transaction log, but if you want to try, it is there. It will not let you. Because the error message was very clear that we are only allowed to take full backup. So does it make sense to put in full recovery? Um, if you cannot take differential or transaction log, you know, I'll let you decide that. Model database, it comes as a full recovery model. So it's not the same as master. When you install SQL Server, if you check your model database, you'll see that it is in full recovery model. Now, what can I do with the backup? Full, yes. 
differential? Yes. Transaction log? Yes. Same as user databases. In fact, any user database we create takes a lot of settings from model database. Let's put it in simple recovery. I'm not advocating you do that. I'm just going to show you the options that, you know, what changes. So do not quote me that I put it in simple. It's just for a demo purpose. You might, you know, if you're in, a, in your dev environment, you might, but I'm not going to get there. We can still take a full. Can you still take a differential? Of course, we wouldn't be able to take a transaction log. MSDB behave exactly the same as model database. So I wrote the code here. I'm not going to run it, because it will be a repeat of what I showed you for model database. But the behavior is exactly the same. So I have the code. If you want to run it, check by yourself you know, when you download the script. Next, I'm going to skip to TemDB. TemDB is special because there's been many talk here by Microsoft engineers, by other speakers, you know, just around TemDB, right, because you use it more for many purposes. But one thing is, as soon as, every time we restart our SQL Server, what happens? We get a fresh TemDB, right? Nothing persists, no need to persist. Uh, but it's a database that has a lot of contention. There's a lot of improvement in Microsoft every release. There's been talk even in this conference. So by default, it's a simple recovery, and you cannot change it. If you try to change it, you're going to, you're going to get a message, for sure. Like I could change master model. You cannot change anything here. So just to take a look, it's in simple recovery. And can I take a full backup? No. No backups are allowed on TemDB, period. As simple as that. So I'm not going to even attempt any other differential or transaction log. The error message is very clear. So I put a small summary table. I know it's not fancy. It's not a PowerPoint. But whatever I could do in SSMS, uh, just if you want to take a look, you know. In, uh, number four, is transactional backup necessary during full backup? Uh, so I have a comment at the end. I'll answer that. But for, to, for this demo, I restored Stack Overflow 2010. I put it, you know, link from Brent Ozers has instruction if you want to download that and restore how to do that. So you go to line 842. The demo starts here. So I'm just going to uh, I have two while loops. I'm going to set this up. One insert some records. And the other one continuously take transaction log backup while we'll be running a full backup. So I'm going to start the insert loop, as my instruction says. I am going to start a full backup. And then I'm also going to start taking a transaction log backup. It's going to take about 30 seconds. So I'm going to take a pause. Any question or comment? OK. So we have to wait another 14 seconds. We can stare at this. So behind the scene, what it's doing is uh, it's taking a bunch of transaction log backups while the full backup is running, right? So this is done. And my instruction says I should stop the insert loop. And now I should stop the, let me take another full log backup and stop this. OK. So now if we come here, what happened here? So this full backup finished at this time, right? And at the same time, we also had this transition log backups. And the full backup finished around 9.53.55, right? And if we look at this, so either this one or this one, this is included up to, in the, up to you know, this full backup. So if we want to 
get back up to those rows, we can just restore the full backup and we'll probably get you know, the records up to, I don't know, like 19 or 20. We don't need those transaction log backups. So let's try to restore and see what happened. So I said in my comments that it depends, right? What will happen if my backup fails, full backup fails? Or if you get a request for a restore point between the two full backups, then you will need those transaction log backups. But if you just want to get to a state after the full backup, you really don't need those intermediate transaction logs, right? So my point is, your log doesn't get truncated. It gets backed up. But normally, what do we think? That in a full recovery model, transaction log will truncate our logs. During a full backup, when it's running, that does not happen. That's the point to prove this. But that, does that mean I'm not going to take backup? You better, I would take it. I take it in my production environment. Because if I get a request for in between, I need those. Make sense? So as you see, I just restored the full backup. I got up to 18 rows, right? So uh, yeah, without using the transaction log. But if I used to, if I got a request that I want to restore up to here, and I said I didn't have transaction log, then I'm out of luck, right? So uh, does backup use a buffer, buffer pool to read data pages? It does use some memory, but it doesn't use the regular buffer that we use to read pages from the disk or you know, our planned cache and all that. It doesn't share that. So to prove that, quick answer is no. But if you want a detailed um, read, and I put a link from Microsoft's um, website, so read that, right? So I'm just going to insert 1,000 rows. And we can see that it's there. I love my friend Pinal Dave from India. He wrote this, so I just stole it. We can go and see in the cache. Uh, we have six pages, four dirty, two clean, right? And now I'm going to clean the buffer pool and make sure there's no pages in the buffer. So you have zero page. I take a full backup and check the buffer pool again. The backup is done. Are those pages there in the buffer? No. So when we take full backup, it doesn't bring it, all the pages to a regular buffer. How does it do it? It's a different topic. Um, you know, there's max buffer size, how many buffers do you use during backup to optimize backup, whole different, I'm sure there are talks that you know, other, uh, other speakers give. You can look those up. So it does not use. And I put a clean up. If you run my demo, uh, you can uh, clean it up in one go. Everything will go. So we have two minutes. It's good. So I can take questions, comments. I know I said no questions, but because we have two minutes, we can use it. Otherwise, thank you for coming.